So this is the outline for our talk today. We'll talk a bit about the probes, sonar anatomy, basic principle of lung and airway ultrasound, and the use of pokers in clinical practice. These are the three common ultrasound probes that we use uh, day to day. We start with the linear probe. Linear probe has a high frequency. It functions like a small scalpel blade. It cuts superficially, hence you can see the structure as superficially very clear and but unfortunately you couldn't see the deeper structure. The second probe is a phase array probe. Uh, the cardiologists like to use this. Right? The image that produced is like an axe knife like this. Right? You can detect the movement uh, structure very well as we see usually you use in a cardiac uh, echo. The third probe is a curvy linear probe. It is rather a rough probe. It is like a, a chopping knife. It can go quite deep because of a lower frequency. But unfortunately, the image I produce is usually not that detailed. So these are the three more important probes they are going to use. We started with your ultrasound or the airway. Just a bit of anatomy of the anatomy of the airway. We started with the this is a thyroid cartilage, cricoid thyroid membrane, cricoid cartilage. The thyroid gland is here and the trachea ring. I'm going to use ultrasound to identify all these important structure. So this is how we do. We started with a transverse scan, right? And uh, we start from a lower end, the lower end of the neck, and then move outward as in this manner, right? So patient lies supine. We put the probe transversely from the start from the lower end to the upper end. Or you can do the, up, the, the other way around as well, from the top end to low down. So the mnemonic that we need to remember is a tap T. T A C T. The T lower end stands for the image they're going to produce like this, which is a thyroid gland level. C is a is a quicot cartilage uh, images, and followed by a quicot thyroid uh, membrane, and T is stand for the thyroid cartilage. Let's go one by one. We start with the low, small letter T, right? Thyroid gland level. When you look at when you put a probe at this level, you could going to see this like a pyrrhic cattle head, like in this shape. Right? This is the thyroid gland. Okay? The central part is actually the airway, the trachea. Okay? And you could see that this small little round structure here is esophagus. If you move outwards, okay, move one level outwards, the cricoid cartilage level, you could see like a horseshoe black structure here. It is actually a cricoid cartilage. And you move further outwards, okay, you're going to see the A. A is the cricoid thyroid membrane because at this level, you're going to see the membrane and the airway here. So you can see the multiple air line. So this is a cricoid thyroid membrane level. And you move outward further, it is a thyroid cartilage level. The thyroid cartilage is here like a dome shape, a church dome shape. As you can see that if you move slowly outward, okay, and then the dome shape come up. After the dome shape come up, the inner structure you're going to observe here is actually a vocal cord. As you can see, the vocal cord is moving symmetrical this side. From this view, you can assess the vocal cord movement. As you can see that this move, vocal cord moves symmetrical both sides, but not here. Huh? So you could see the right side movement, the left side is not moving very much. After the transverse view, one can assess the longitudinal view. So this is the, or the sagittal view. So when you move outwards, okay, the structure they're going to see is quite similar like a, a, a change of pearl with a big pearl at the end, right? So you could see that this round structure here is actually formed by trachea cartilage. Like the trachea cartilage appear blackish color and then they, are, seem, they, they appear in a changed manner, right? As the probe moves outwards, you're going to see the biggest pearl here, right? The biggest pearl here represent the cricoid cartilage. And move further outwards, you're going to see here, there's a membrane here, okay? Which is the cricoid thyroid membrane. And you move further outwards, this is a appearance of the thyroid cartilage and as and this picture summarizes what we have discussed just now okay so the the is a change of pearl which is with the largest pearl on the top here right and it's had the membrane here quite thyroid membrane and then it's a thyroid cartilage and you could see that this is a, a white disc appearance here this is a quite a mucosa membrane okay anything beyond that is air right This is how we're going to marking cricoid thyroid membrane in a practical, practical manner. Okay, as you can see that we use a cannula to assist her to mark. You can put the ultrasound probe 
onto the cannula and then adjust the adjust the image and then you move the needle forwards upwards to get the exact uh, position of the cricothyroid as you could see this picture all right so this is the image of the shadowing that created by the uh, the cannula okay you've got the shadowing here right and as you can remember the images just now this is a chain of pearl the largest pearl represent the cricoid uh, cricoid cartilage okay so at the lower end subsequently you move the probe outwards okay and move the needle as well and until you reach the cricothyroid membrane here right so and you move the needle to uh, to, uh, to, to be seated on, on the appropriate area as, as shown here okay and then that is the marking for your cricothyroid membrane this is a two simple way to find out correct tube placement the vocal cord the loss of vocal cord triangle and then the longitudinal scan remember just now when you talk about uh, the the scan at the thyroid uh, cartilage area all right so you see the two vocal cord moving right symmetric symmetrically right when the tube is put into the uh, a trachea you could see that there's no longer uh, movement okay and then you see the round structure here with the ett the other important way is that uh, when you put your longitudinal scan okay you could see that actually we will discuss just now this is a one line here only all right anything beyond that is air if you could see that some tubular structure here that represent the ett and you could see the tip of the ett right and you can even see the position whether it is too high out or too uh, or in a good position as from this uh, scanning the next one we're going to move to lung ultrasound in terms of the lung ultrasound the two important probe that you're going to use is the linear probe and also the curvy linear probe okay so this is a linear probe image they're going to produce all right for linear probe because of the area is very small okay and it's superficial whatever they will see here is a small area and quite superficial structure here this is a ribs and then this is a, this is a lung for curvy linear as a probe is quite big it can go quite a lot of area right a quite a wide area as you can see here you can see a multiple rib here okay and you also can go quite deep okay so this is the image that produced by the curvy linear probe and in terms of probe orientation wise one can do the longitudinal image by placing the probe sagittally this is the image you're going to produce okay with the rib shadowing here as you can see that some lesion here okay it's a one patch there okay similarly you can put the oblique scanning okay and uh you you in uh, in the oblique scanning you do not have the rib to obscure your view and you can see the lung much better and you can see the similar lesion appear here when performing a lung ultrasound the probe need to be perpendicular to the surface of the lung as shown here okay the orientation of the lung ultrasound probe is very important right? one need to put it perpendicular rather than deviated you, you could see that the image is very much different as shown here if it is not perpendicular one might find that it is a lot of abnormality here as compared to relatively normal ultrasound surfaces here this is a how the ultrasound lung can be done in the intubated patient right as we are quite limited we only have anterior surface and the lateral surfaces hence uh, we need to find a way to it, how are going to um, monitor the posterior lung field this is the image that we've shown here how to do the anterior lung field and these are the modified uh, technique that you can have one can see the posterior aspect of the lung okay like you're putting the probe over the left hypochondrial area to see the left posterior lung you will do a sub siphon area you look outwards to see the posterior aspect of the lung and over here you put the right hypochondrial area to see the right lower lobe air is the enemy of the ultrasound whatever that you see in the air field area is just an artifact tissue of the body is a pierce of the ultrasound and you can see the tissue structure very really well the free is the best friend whereby when the free you could see the whole structure very really clearly and most of the time in a black color manner bone metal calcified tissue you see too but you are not able to see through it because the waveform are not able to pass through so this is an example all right so this is a ultrasound image produced by a linear probe superficially you could see the skin tissue and then the fat tissue and the muscle tissue very well all right but when you come to the bone okay you cannot see through it whatever you see here is a blackish shadow here right and once you reach there this is a pure line okay this is a pure line 
the pure line level, we have visceral, uh, vis par parietal and visceral pure. Right? You could see that the, when the lung moves, right, this line actually shows some movement. Right? So this is a, what we call a moving pure line. Anything beyond this point is elated lung. You will not be able to see any structure here. Whatever you see here is actually a mirror image of what has been shown here, right? It's a mirror image. As you will see that if you follow this through, this one is a mirror image of this side. Okay, this one is a mirror image of this side, and this line is actually a mirror image of this, right? Okay. And normal lung create artifact of mirror image of the structure above the pillar line of the lung. And in lung ultrasound, you are not supposed to see anything beside above the artifact. But once you start to see some things other than this, it is likely to be abnormal. And in terms of lung ultrasound, it's very important. It is just the pattern recognitions and interpretations of artifact. Clinically, lung ultrasound can assess clinician to detect air leak, pulmonary edema, lung infiltration, pleural effusion, and lung mass. And not only that, it can assess the severity, location, characteristic, and also monitor the progress of the lung disease. Let's go to air leak. So this is an example of the normal lung. Ultrasound normal lung, it will see that the pleural line moving quite nicely here. And once there is a pneumothorax, the lung are detached, right? You will not be able to see any lung movement here. So as you've shown here, there's no lung movement here, suggestive of pneumothorax. And if you could see the age of the normal lung adjacent to the pneumothorax, as you can see in this picture, so you could see this is a normal lung movement, and this is the area of pneumothorax, right? This is what we call a lung point. Ultrasound also can assist in terms of diagnosis of pulmonary edema. As pulmonary edema, it is about water in the lung. When you imagine about water, one has to imagine about the rain, okay? So when there is a small pulmonary edema, it's about a small rain, and as the disease progress increasingly the rain is getting heavier and heavier yeah? and this can be found can be found in ultrasound as well as you could see this lung ultrasound right you could see that the small drop what we call a b line here coming up from the pleural line so it suggests of some mild pulmonary edema here as the number of b line as appear here get, get down more this is like a getting the, the it is like a it is like a rain become heavier right and it is a heavy rain uh, appear in these pictures okay right like raining cat and dog you will know that this is the area of severe pulmonary edema so in terms of clinically if one can see the progress of the lung ultrasound progress from the left side to the right side you know that the patient is going to trouble and after treatment and the pro is a progress of the lung from the left side to the right you know that the patient is improved lung ultrasound can be very useful in assessing the pulmonary inflammation like bronchiolitis, pneumonia, and ARDS. In terms of lung inflammations, one has to know that it is about consolidation. The consolidation pictures as shown in this anatomical pictures here, small patch, mild consolidation, larger patch, larger consolidation, bigger consolidation, and the, if the whole lung is consolidated, okay, it becomes a, a lobar pneumonia. Similarly, this appearance can be seen by ultrasound, right? So this is a normal ultrasound lung. If you see the small patch here, it could signify a mild consolidation. As the number of patch is increasing in size, as you see that this is a using a curvy linear probe, it signifies increasing the severity. And if the whole lung become the whole patch like this manner, it shows that the whole lung is involved. Okay? Similarly, biclinical, the progression can be from the left side to the right side. When the lung has been improved, the changes can be moved from the right side to the left side. Ultrasound is also useful in assessing the pleural effusion in terms of quantity and consistency. As you could see here, this is a curvy linear probe assessing the lung. This is a small amount of pleural effusion here. This is a lung base, this is the liver. And if the effusion getting bigger, you can assess using the ultrasound, the amount of the fluid is increasing with the consolidated lung in the midline. And if you're getting more, okay, you could see that the lung actually collapsed. You can assess the right upper, middle, and lower lobe. And if there's a massive pleural effusion, it can be shown as well. We can also assess the consistency of the fluid. As you could see here, the fluid here are rather clean, which is black color. As you could see in this ultrasound, there's a lot of fibrin here. This ultrasound image show that the pleural fluid are basically very thickened. 
This is how an ultrasound lung can assist in clinical diagnosis. Right? These three chest X-ray as shown here show a similar pattern of the right-sided opacity. By using lung ultrasound, we can actually differentiate whether it is the lobar pneumonia, whether it is a massive pleural effusion, whether there is a mass in the lung. In this case, there is a teratoma in the lung field. With that, I thank you.